come and magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. Oh, come and let us lift up our voices that we may make a joyful noise unto the rock of our salvation. Come and let us offer up the sacrifice of praise unto our King. This is the day that the Lord has made and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. I don't know about you this morning, but I'm glad that he woke me up one more time. He started me on my way. Still give me breath in my body. Still give me the activity of my limbs. I don't know about you this morning, but I think I owe the Lord a praise this morning. I owe him for all that he's done for me. Who could have woke you up this morning? Who else would have started you on your way? Who else is it that you lean on that props you up when you are on every lean inside? Who is it that you talk to when you are going through the valley of the shadow of death? Who is it that you lean on that when your body is failing and there is sickness in your body? Who, is, who else is it that you call on when you can't see your way? I don't know about you, but I just believe we call him God. He's Jehovah God. Every now and then, I need him to be Jehovah Rapha, the God that heals me. Every now and then, I need him to be Jehovah Jireh, the God that provides for me. Every now and then, I need him to be Jehovah Shalom, the God that gives me peace when I'm going through my storm. Has anybody been through a storm lately and God has blessed you and you made it through the storm? If you made it through, you owe him a praise today. You owe him a praise. You know why you owe him a praise? Because you couldn't pay for what he did for you. You didn't have enough money in your bank account to do what he did for you. So we are glad today that we serve a God that can meet every need. He's the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. Join me in prayer as we invite him into this place on this day because we want his presence here with us. Yes. God, our Heavenly Father, we thank you again for these precious moments called life yes. that you have given us. Thank you this morning for brand new mercies. But we don't have to lean on yesterday's mercies. You, but you've given us new mercies that we can lean on. And for this, God, we say thank you. Thank you. We tell you thank you this morning because your word says that in everything we ought to give thanks. Yeah. Well, this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning us today. So Holy Spirit, come now and breathe on these cohorts of ours that we may do thy blessed will. For we've come to praise you today. We've come to magnify your holy and righteous name. You alone are worthy to be praised. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same. Your name is to be praised. So we thank you this morning for the opportunity that you've given us once again that we can praise you and lift you up. Now, Lord, bless my neighbor on my left and my neighbor on my right. Bless my neighbor in front of me and my neighbor behind me today that we can join in together to make a joyful noise unto the rock of our salvation. We love you, we thank you, and we praise you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. The people of God said amen. 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 And amen. 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 You may take your seats. Take your seats. It's a choir now. The choir is going to come now and they're going to lead in singing this morning. Come on, join the choir this morning. Praise the Lord, everybody.
Come on, bless the Lord this morning. Here I am. Come to worship him today. Come to praise him today. All because he is God this morning. Amen. If you have your Bibles with you this morning, if you can turn to the gospel as recorded by Mark chapter 4. There's a familiar story for those of us who have been in church for some time. Mark chapter 4, verse 35. I'm going to read this morning from uh, the New King James Version this morning. I'm going to switch up, Ronnie. Don't, I'll do the uh, NIV when I preach, okay? So you don't have to put it up. We okay. We all right. Use your Bibles. Okay. But she still got it up. Oh, she's smart. <laughs> Amen. I forgot who I was talking to. If you go in the room and you're the sharpest knife in the room, your room is not big enough. You'll catch that later. That's all right. Amen. Amen. The Gospel of Mark, chapter 4, begin at verse number 35. These words are recorded by Mark. He says, On the same day when evening had come, he said to them, Let us cross over to the other side. Now when they had left the multitudes, and they took him along in the boat as he was. And other little boats were also with him. And a great windstorm arose, and the waves beat into the boat, so that it was already filling. But he was in the stern, asleep on a pillow. And they awoke him and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? Then he arose and rebu rebuked the wind, and said to the sea, Peace. Be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. But he said to them, Why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? And they feared exceedingly, and said to one another, Who can this be, that even the wind and the sea obey him? Yes. Amen. Amen. The reading of the word this morning. It's prayer time in our house. It's a time that we come to join in. Pray together. We pray because we realize that God still answers prayers. And I'm glad this morning that he still answers prayers. I'm glad to know that when I bow down before him and I have a little talk with him and I ask him in the name of his son Jesus that he hears my prayer and he answers my prayer. This morning as we come to pray together, I'm going to ask Dick and Shirley Strowman if she would lead this morning. But before she prays this morning, we want to lift up names this morning. We want to lift up the family of Sister Vernell Lamb, who, who lost her mother on last week. We want to lift Sister Lamb's family up in prayer. Sister Jackie has asked that we pray for her. If you want to come up, Sister Jackie. And we pray for her this morning. And there may be somebody else in the house this morning that you feel like you just want to ease your way to the altar this morning. I invite you to come this morning. I invite you to come this morning. You know, God is still doing great things, y'all. I don't know if you realize it or not. He's still doing great things. But all the silly stuff we see in Congress, all the crazy rules and they're still trying to make God's still doing some great and marvelous things but I still believe and I, I, I can hear him saying in my spirit I still need you to trust in me I still need you to have confidence in me that even when you're in the accident I can heal your body I can fix it for you even when you've been down to the lowest part of the valley, I can still lift you up. That even when you have given the bad report by the doctors, and the doctor says, I've done all that I can do, God says, give me a chance to step in. Just, just give me a chance to step in. Allow me to access, have access to your problems. And he says, I'll fix it for you if you just give me the access today. So for those of you who are praying at the altar this morning, give him access this morning. 
And when you give him access to your problems, you give him access to your problems, he'll show you that he has authority and he has the power over your problems. So Sister Shirley, Deacon Shirley was going to pray. Pray, Deacon. Let us pray. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for letting us, waking us up to live to see another day. Thank you for your presence here in this sanctuary. Thank you for your son, Jesus. This Lent season, Lord, let us remember what it's all about. The death, the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Yes. On, he died, but on the third day, he rose up out of that <laughs> grave, Lord. And he's with you, sitting on the right-hand side of you, interceding for us. Mm. And Lord, we love you and we thank you. We're asking you, Lord, to please continue to bless Mount Lebanon Baptist Church. Bless the congregation. Bless each and every person standing here before you. You know what they stand in need of, Lord. We're asking you, Lord, whatever they're asking for, and they pray. They love you, Lord. We're asking you to do your will, your way for them. And please continue to bless Miss Lamb's family, Lord. Strengthen them, Lord. Comfort them in the passing of our, her mother, Lord. And Father God, we're asking you to watch over this United States of America, Lord. Let us all come together, Lord, on one accord. We're asking you to bless the president and vice president. They have the weight of the world on their shoulders, Lord, but you can be intervening for them, Lord. And Father God, we're asking you to help us to learn to walk by faith yes. and not by sight, Lord. Pray, and we're asking you, Lord, to just touch this country, Lord. Please, we God. need you, Lord, most of all. And let us remember that Jesus is coming back. Yeah. We love you. We praise you. In Jesus' name, Jesus. amen. amen. Yes. Amen. 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 Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you, Diggin Strowman, for leading us this morning to the throne of grace. Amen. Amen. Brother Marcus, I think you're going to come and welcome everybody this morning. Amen. God bless you. Come on. Bless God for Brother Marcus this morning as he comes to welcome everybody today. Amen. 
morning, church. Come on, y'all can do better than that. Good morning, church. Good morning. Act, act like God has woke you up this morning and brought you all the way. All right. All right. We want to uh, ask today, is there any bless any is there any visitors today? Please stand. Well, everybody's not on the roll, so some of y'all in here are visitors. Amen. So if you don't want to stand, that's okay, because you know what? You're still welcome anyway. So here's a thought I want to leave you with here today is let God have his way in your life. And saying that, don't cut your own self short from his deliverance, mm. his healing, yes. even down to his prosperity. Yes. So in saying that, let God have his way in your life and you'll find out just how blessed you really are. Amen. So we're going to have further remarks from our own pastor, Bobby Bowser. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you, Brother Marcus, for welcoming everybody this morning. We're just so grateful for those of you who got up on time, for those of you who set your clocks forward on last night. And you got up in daylight saving times, not at Eastern Standard Time. Amen. So we're just so grateful for those of you who are here this morning. For those of you who are watching by Facebook, uh, we welcome you to the sanctuary here at Mount Lebanon Baptist Church. We're located at 1141 Campostello Road in the city of Norfolk, Virginia, where the zip code is 23523. And we welcome you to join us this morning. But we also welcome you to our sanctuary that you can come on any Sunday at 10 a.m. to come and to worship with you. We would love to have you with us that we can worship God together in spirit and in truth because he is a true and the living God. God bless you and may heaven smile upon you. Just a few announcements this morning. First of all, uh, the ushers uh, will be having a meeting following the morning uh, worship, uh, so please be Meet the ushers in the multi-purpose room immediately following morning worship. And on next Sunday, the ushers of our church will be celebrating the ushers' anniversary. And so we're going to ask that you invite somebody next Sunday to come to be with us as our ushers celebrate uh, their anniversary on next Sunday morning. Would you agree with me this morning that our ushers do a great job? Yeah. Amen. And they do a great job. They're always on their post that when you come in, and when you come into Mount Lebanon, you always are greeted with a smile and face. You can't see the face sometimes behind the mask back there, but I can tell you, just if you can hear their voices, there's a smile down on the inside. So we are just so grateful for our ushers that they will celebrate on next week, and we're going to come and celebrate also. A special guest uh, preacher on next Sunday will be uh, pastor Maurice Yancey, he used to pastor the, he's a former pastor of the Morning Star Baptist Church in Portsmouth. So we're going to welcome him to our pulpit on next Sunday as our guest preacher for Usher's anniversary. Amen? All right, all right. You know, every now and then, you know, we do make mistakes. Is that, y'all, y'all agree with that? All of us make mistakes sometimes. Carolyn, you didn't raise your hand, but all of us do make mistakes. Amen. Some, sometime you are, you are looking at me as if to say, not me, Reverend, but that's all right. I, I, got, I got all that. We all make mistakes sometimes. And I, I did make a mistake on last Sunday, and, and I want to correct that mistake that I made on last Sunday. I thought she was going to be here, but she's not here this morning. But on last Sunday, we were celebrating birthdays. We were celebrating birthdays, and I had uh, Sister Helen Booth to stand up. And I said that, you know, we were going to celebrate her birthday coming this Friday, which was on Friday of last week, that she celebrated her birthday. And I said it would be 96 years, but I was wrong. It wasn't 96 years. See, COVID messed me up. I missed some years in there. She celebrated 98 on Friday. Uh, God Almighty. Celebrated 98 on last Friday. You know what? I called her and wished her a happy birthday, and she said, Pastor, my phone's been ringing off the hook. Folks been calling, 
helping me to celebrate and saying happy birthday to me. Well, you know, Sister Booth, I don't know if you're watching or I'm sure somebody's going to tell you I said this, you know, because we can't keep a whole lot to ourselves. You know, somebody's going to tell you that I said this. But, you know, I pray that if I do make it to 98, that I be as healthy, as wealthy as you are. You know, she's, she, she's still spunky at 98 years young. Amen. She'll, she'll get the pastor straight in a heartbeat. You know, she don't even hold nothing back. Yeah, but that's, that's her, and I love her for her. But at the end, Lucy, she always tell me, you know I love you. <laughs> but why are you treating me so bad if you love me? But that's, that's Sister Helen Booth, so we're just so grateful. Ronnie, you got something for me? Okay, you just trying. Okay, Women's History Month. Okay, thank you, thank you. All, all right, all right. That's what you. That's what you were there for. I thought you just wanted to be close to me. Okay, all right. Come on, Sister Ronnie. Veronica Moore is going to come. We're celebrating Women's History Month this month. Okay, she's going to present this morning. God bless you. Thank you. Good morning. In honor of Women's History Month, they asked me to speak to you about some great educators. They probably thought that I would talk to you about educators such as Fannie Jackson Copeland, who was the first African-American to become a principal in the United States, or even Mary Bethune, who was a dedicated educator who started a boarding school that, related, that later became Bethune-Cookman College. They may even have thought I would talk to you about Dorothy Height, an educator who helped organize the infamous 1963 March on Washington. And she later received the Presidential Medal of Freedom and the Congressional Gold Medal. Well, while Copeland, Bethune, and Height are indeed great educators, I want to talk to you this morning about some educators that have impacted my life. Some of these educators have degrees from institutions of higher learning called colleges. And some of these educators have degrees from the School of Hard Knocks called Life. Mm -hmm. At the top of my professional educators list, you will find Ms. Dorothy Wyatt Turner. She was my first grade teacher and my neighbor. She taught me to read using Dick, Jane, Sally, Puffs, and Tim. But she also taught me that I could not keep what happened at school away from home. Because from first grade to seventh grade, if Miss Turner knew anything that I did, good or bad, when she got home, my mom would know it. Then there was my fourth grade teacher. Miss Baden. Miss Baden was very, very, very strict. I now believe that she must have been a Christian who believed in Proverbs 13, 24. Ah. Spare the rod, spare the child. Because Miss Baden had a ruler. And if you did not follow her instructions, she would use that ruler. She only had to use it on me once. And she taught me that in life, it is sometimes less painful if you do as instructed. <laughs> My last professional educator I want to talk to you about is someone that many of you know, because she was a member here at Mount Lebanon Baptist Church, Dignus Grace Houston. When I became an educator, Grace gave me many tips on classroom management. We didn't always agree, but Grace would say, Veronica, no matter what happens, count it all joy. Right. At first, I thought she was a little crazy. <laughs> but as my walk with Christ has grown, I now understand exactly what she meant. So I challenge you to read James chapter 1, verses 2 to 4, and count it all joy. As I said, there are some educators in my life who were not educators by profession. At the top of that list, you will find 
Jeanette, Rebecca, White, Moore, Easter. Just in case you don't know, that was my mom. I cannot enumerate to you the lessons that my mother taught me, but I would like to share with you one. My mother purchased a black and white composition notebook, and she sat me down at the kitchen table and gave me my first lesson in budgeting. She made two columns. One, she said, was money coming in. I now know that's income. <laughs> the other, she said, was money going out. I now know that's expenditures or spending. And her rule was my going out column could not be greater than my coming in column. I may use a computer today, my phone, and do online banking, but the same principle still holds true. My spending cannot be greater than my income. Another non-professional educator was my Aunt Dora May White Easter. My Aunt Dora was, fierce, was a fierce lady before fierce became a thing. She was an advocate for the little man, and she was a strong believer in exercising your political right. If ever there was an election, you would find my Aunt Dora there, and she would drag me along. It didn't matter the weather. We would be there passing out sample ballots, telling people who to vote for. And if we weren't at the polls, she would be driving people back and forth to the polls, and me, I would be riding shotgun. Now, the last three educators I want to talk about are people that you also may know because they are members of Mount Lebanon Baptist Church, and I am privileged to call them friends. They are Lolita Abraham, Ora Lee, and Carolyn Lewis Weeds. These ladies have taught me that we must always be a servant of God that we must trust him, have faith in him, and do our best to live in his will. Now, I could go on and on and on about people who have educated me and lessons that I have learned, but I will stop here. But I hope you haven't missed the point that I was trying to make. And I want to make it perfectly clear, that point is, we are all educators. We may have the title mom or dad, sister or brother, aunt or uncle, niece or nephew, cousin or friend, but we are all educators. And I challenge you to be the best educator that you can be. Take time to share your life with someone. Talk to someone, listen to someone, teach somebody to read or read to someone. And no, it doesn't have to be a child. It can be an adult, because adults need attention and learning how to read as well. As an educator, I want to leave you with one thought. And that is, you cannot save a million dollars until you first save a penny. I'll repeat it. You cannot save a million dollars until you first save a penny. Good morning, Mount Lebanon. I hope that you know that today, like every day, is a good day for teaching and learning, and you are not alone. Oh, well, come on, y'all can do better than that. Come on, come on, come on. Thank you. Come on. Well, well said, well said, Sister Veronica, well said this morning, amen. We're all teachers, folks are always watching us, so we're teachers, teachers. Thank you, thank you so much. God bless you. Thank you, Sister Yule, for leading our women uh, this year, amen. God bless you, God bless you, praise God. If you notice in the sanctuary, a lot of the women are wearing some purple today because it was asked, you were asked to wear some purple today. I don't know if they're going to change the colors or what they're going to do, but please, please, if you are a lady and you did not get to 
email or, or didn't get the message, please listen to them each, each week. Each, listen to them throughout the month. Black history, women's history. Amen, amen, amen. That's why I got the pink, the purple on today to try to join in with them. Choir's going to now sing. Come on, come on, come on. Choir's going to sing, and then we're going to come back with the word this morning. Come on, choir.
grateful this morning grateful for how the Lord has blessed grateful how the Lord has led you grateful how the Lord has kept you once again to be able to come to his house once again in health as well as even if it's just a little bit of wealth we're grateful this morning unto the Lord come on bless God for the music ministry Mount Lebanon Baptist Church this morning. Amen. Amen. We're so grateful for a choir and our musicians this morning. Come on, join me in prayer as we get started. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you again. It is another privilege that you've given us to come to stand behind this sacred desk. Come now with a fresh anointing and breathe on me. Touch my lips, my heart, and my mind, that I may do thy blessed will. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart, let it be acceptable in thy sight. For you are my strength and you are my redeemer. In Jesus' name, amen. The gospel is recorded by Mark chapter 4. I want to go back there just for a moment. You don't have to stand for the words. Just going to look at verse number 35. Gospel of Mark chapter 4, verse number 35. It's on the screen right there. The Bible says, Mark's gospel, it says, And that day when evening came, he said to his disciples, Let us go over to the other side. New King James says, he says, Let us cross over to the other side. It's an old familiar text for many of us, this story, but I believe that you can get fresh water from an old well. We'll talk this morning just for a little while from the subject, the aid of the Lord. The aid of the Lord. I hope by now, if you've been in church for any length of time, that you know that there are times in your life where you would have a satanic attack. Times in your life when the devil will attack you. Well, if you don't know that by now, and if you don't believe that, I say to you, just keep living. You will find out that the devil will attack you. How, how you know, Pastor, the devil will attack you? I, I know because I read my Bible, because Jesus gives us the mission statement of the devil coming from John chapter 10, verse 10, in the, in the A clause right there. Jesus says, the devil comes only but to steal, kill, and to destroy. That's basically the devil's mission statement. If you don't believe the devil will attack you, you ought to look at Luke 22, verse 31, where Jesus told Simon Peter, he says, Satan has desire to sift you like wheat, but I've already prayed for you. You don't believe that the devil will attack you, or you ought to just look at 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8. Because Peter says, your adversary, uh, the devil, is like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. You know, so, so you, you ought not to be surprised today when the devil launches attack on you. You ought not be surprised today when the devil launches attack on your children. You ought not be surprised today when the devil launches attack 
on your finances as well as your family. And, and the reason that I know that the devil will launch attack on you be because the devil holds back on nobody. No, nobody is extinct from attack of the devil. But so understand, as a believer in God, there, there, as a child of God, there are three reasons why Satan wants to attack a child of God. Well, the first reason that Satan wants to attack a child of God is that Satan wants to try to disprove what's in you. He, he wants to try to disprove what's in you. Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 7, Paul says, we have this treasure in earthen vessels. There is a treasure that God has placed in these earthen vessels of ours, and the devil wants to disprove to you that God hasn't put anything really on the inside of you. The devil wants to try to disprove what's in you. And I know that he's put something in us because if you read 1 John 4 and 4, the Bible says, greater is he that is within you than he that is within the world. God has placed something in you, but the devil wants to disprove to you that God hasn't put anything in you. That, that's why the devil tries to make your faith faulty. He doesn't want you to believe that God has placed anything on the inside of you. And he tries to make you think that, that you don't have what the Lord place on the inside of you. But the word that I have for you today is that what you have in you is greater than what's after you. Come here, boy. What, what you have in you is greater than what's coming after you. That's why he wants to disprove what's in you. You, But another reason that he attacks the child of God is not only does he want to disprove what he has in you, but he wants to try to deny what's for you. He wants to try to deny what's for you. First Peter, First Peter 1 and 4, 4 says, For we have this inheritance, incorruptible and undefiled, and that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you. Well, why, why, why does he want to try to disprove and, and deny what's for us? It is because the devil has already gotten a glimpse of what's coming your way. He, he knows that greater is coming to you, but he wants to make you think that, that, that it's not there and that God it is not going to give you what God has already place in you and already what God has already stored up for you. You ought to tell somebody this morning that, that I got a word for you and, and the word for you is that even though he's got a glimpse, Derek, of what's coming my way, he, he really don't know what really God has sent in my way because the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 2 and 9 that I have not seen, if has not heard what good thing the Lord has in store for those who love him. He wants to disprove what's in us, and he wants to deny what's for us. But then thirdly, he wants to destroy who's with us. He wants to destroy who's with us. Understand today, that, that surely, that, that we are not the real target. We are not the real target, but the devil wants the person that we are with. That's the real target, but because the devil can't get to him and we are a part of him, he wants to get us because he doesn't like us being a part of the one that he, he really wants to target. You see, the devil really wants Jesus Christ, but because we are with him, he launches his attacks on us. That's why Jesus told us in John 15 and 18, Jesus says, if the world hates you, ye know that it hates me before it even hated you. But, but I want to tell somebody this morning, but that explains why you can testify that you have more trouble after you got saved than before you got saved. Preach, boy. Hold on for it. That, that, that explains why you got more trouble now after you got saved than before you got saved. <laughs> yeah, because after you got saved and you got on the Lord's side, the devil got upset because you got on the Lord's side. So now he comes and really wants to attack you. You see, before you got saved, you were just by yourself. 
You, you, you ain't even had no help but, 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 but simply by your cousin them. That, that's all the help that you had. But, but Jesus has this help that he can get us to get over anything that comes our lives. So now that we've gotten saved and we're on the Lord's side, he now launches his attack against us because he doesn't like us being on the Lord's side because we're on the Lord. When we're on the Lord's side, the Lord will help us to overcome any situation that comes my way. Can I take my time to preach to somebody today that you might as well go on and get mad because the launch of the devil is coming but you ought to tell somebody greater is he that is within me than he that's in the world so devil when you come to try to launch your attack on me I'm already ready because I've got the real one that can defeat you on my side and he tells me that I ought to put you right where you belong underneath of my feet. Is there anybody here this morning that want to tell somebody, I know where he belongs. He belongs under my feet because he crawls on his belly and he ought to be under my feet. So he wants to launch his attack on us. He wants to disprove. Uh, he, he wants to disprove what we have in us. He wants to deny what we have for us. And he, he also really wants to, this, this morning, he wants to destroy who's with us. Well, this morning when we come to this text that we read about Jesus and these boys in this boat, this morning you got to understand that, that many times have you read this thing, you probably thought you already knew the story. All about how Jesus gets in the boat with the boys and then they're trying to make it on the other side and the storm comes up. But, but can I tell you what the storm is this morning, Brutus? The, the storm in, in the text this morning, it, it, is, it is an attack of the enemy. That, that, that's what the storm is. It's an, attack, it's an attack of the devil. The devil is now launching his attack because the Bible says in verse number 34, it says, a great storm of wind and, and the waves beat on the boat there. It's a great storm. That, that now comes. Well, the question this morning is, well, what, what do you do when the vehicle you're in is under attack? Attack comes on the boat. Jesus is in the boat. The boys are in the boat with Jesus. But the question is, well, what do you do when the vehicle that you're in is under attack? What, 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 do, you, what do you do when, when your friendship is under attack? What do you do when your relationships is under attack? What do you do when your marriage is under attack? What do you do when your fellowship comes under a attack? Well, well, the Bible says in, in, the Bible says in, 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 in Isaiah 59 and 19, it says, when the enemy shall come, he comes in like a flood. He says, when the enemy comes, he comes in like a flood. He, he doesn't say if the enemy comes. It says when the enemy comes. In other words, it's coming because the word when is nothing but an adverb for time. It says it's just a matter of time before the enemy is going to step in and going to attack you. But the devil, why is he going to attack us? He, he's going to attack us because he doesn't want to see your marriage blessed. He's going to attack us because he doesn't want to see your children saved. He doesn't want to see you have peace in your family. He doesn't want to see your finance prospering. He doesn't want to see you coming to Mount Lebanon on Sunday giving the Lord praise. But because you are in the boat and the Lord is with you and when the attack comes, it ain't just on you, but the attack is on the Lord also. That tells me, Derek, that, 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 that when the attack comes on me and the Lord, I might get upset and I try to fight the attack, but i got somebody with me that can aid me in the attack. Come here, come here, come here this morning. Well, what, what, what do you do? You, you have to have trust that the Lord can aid you under your attack. Ah, uh, he can aid you under your attack. Well, well, in the text this morning, we, we discover three ways the Lord can aid us. We discover three ways in which the Lord can aid us. Well, well the first way the Lord can aid us, Lonnie, is that the, the, the Lord will give aid will give you aid and he, when he gives you an explanation of the attack. He'll give you aid when he gives you an explanation 
of the attack. Listen, uh, when, when, whenever we get, whenever I get attacked, whenever I know the devil is attacking me, one of the things that I want to know is why. Why is he attacking me? Because if I know why he's attacking me, then, then that will just help me to understand what I need to do the next time when he attacks me, how to, how to get around that. But if I don't know why, then I don't know how to avoid the next attack. But the Bible says this morning, this, that, 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 this text right here, that, that God will give us an explanation for the attack. You see, the reason that water is coming into the boat is because there is a word in the boat. Listen, the reason that there is water coming in the boat because there is a word coming from the boat. Ah, look, look at verse number one. If you go back to verse number one here in chapter, chapter four, the Bible says a great multitude gathered to Jesus, so he got into the boat with them. And then he began, he taught them many things while they were there in the boat. Look, watch this. If you go back and read that whole passage right there from verse 1 all the way to verse 34, Jesus is giving parables. He's given a word to the people. He's given word to the people while the people are there on shore and he's there with them. But then Jesus gets in the boat with the disciples and they launch out. Here's what you got to understand. The word is not there on the shore. The word now is in the boat. Y'all missed that right there. The word is now in the boat and the word is coming from the boat. So what the devil does, the devil now attack, uh, begins to attack the boat with water coming in the boat because the devil has to now block the word coming from the boat. He, he, he starts the attack right there on the boat because there's a word in the boat and there's word coming out from the boat. So he launches an attack on the boat because the devil knows that if he can't kill the word and the word can get in those who are in the boat, he has no authority over those in the boat. Can I tell somebody this morning that the devil it will try to drown you because he now has to try to drown the word that's in the boat so the word won't come from the boat but you ought to tell somebody I'm safe when I'm in the boat because I'm safe because I got the word with me when I'm in the boat hey. got word coming from the boat so, so, so that, that, that's why the enemy attacks you because the enemy wants to attack you because he doesn't want to see your marriage blessed so he now brings attacks he doesn't want to see your ministry blessed that's why he attacks it because he knows if he doesn't launch he doesn't launch an attack that ministry is going to grow that marriage is going to prosper so he tries to sink that in which you know that God can bless yeah, but you got to know that the Lord will aid you. How will he aid you? He'll aid you when he gives you an explanation for, for the attack. He'll give you an explanation for the attack. But there's another way I want to give you this morning why the Lord, how the Lord can aid us. Another reason right here is that not only will he give you an explanation for the attack, but the text tells us more that he'll give you an example during the attack. He'll give us an example during the uh, attack. The Bible says since there was a word coming from the boat, that, that, that there was a willingness to get in the boat. And the willingness was that the boys that was on the shore with him, that when Jesus got in the boat, the willingness was that they would get in the boat with him. Because Jesus says in verse 35, he says, let us cross over to the other side. The Bible says in verse 36, as they said, that they took Jesus along with them. You see, the attack comes because you decide to follow Jesus. Because you decide, you are willing to decide to follow Jesus. You are willing to partner up with Jesus. And, and most of us will confess today that our attacks from the devil didn't really start until we decided to partner with the Lord. Uh, can I just break that down for you today? Because many of us know that, that even as a couple, 
<laughs> Watch this. Even when, when we were just a couple and we weren't married, we were shacking up, everything was happy for us. Everything was going real hunky good and glorious for us. But as soon as we went to the justice of the peace and we said, I do, and we got back home, every, everything started breaking loose right there. After, you, 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 know why, you know why the attack came afterwards? It was because you were now doing the right thing. And that's why the devil doesn't want you to do the right thing. That's why the attack now comes on you when you're doing, when you're trying to do the right thing. But, but don't get mad. You ought to get glad that, even, that the attack even comes now. Well, why, why is that, preacher? It's because, you be, it's because confrontations are not condemnations. It's confirmation that you're doing the right thing. Your confrontation is not condemnation. It's only a confirmation that you are now doing the right thing. You see, because when you are doing the wrong thing, he already got you. The devil already got you. So the devil don't even have to attack you. He'll let you stay in your sins and you keep on sinning. But the matter, as soon as you get the Lord on your side and you on the side of the Lord, that's when he launches that attack. And it's only a confirmation that you now doing what you ought to be doing because the devil doesn't want you to link up with the one that really wants to bless you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Doesn't want to bless you, but 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 watch this right here because so so now when the attack comes, so so the Lord now gives an example uh, to, to for having for doing the attack. He wants to give us an example now during the attack. Look at verse thirty-eight because verse thirty-eight says, "What is Jesus doing in the attack?" Verse thirty-eight says he's sleeping. He's sleeping in the midst of the attack. He, he's sleeping. Now th this right here is, is, is so important that the gospel of Matthew, Mark, and Luke now records this story of Jesus sleeping there in the boat. All three writers record this story. Ma Matthew in chapter 8 uh, around verse 23, Ma Ma Matthew tells us, first in 24, Matthew tells us, Matthew tells us why the attack. If you go back and read it, he'll tell you why was their attack. Their attack was because Jesus had been teaching all around all day long, so he's now tired, so when he gets in the boat, he now goes to sleep. Luke tells us when the attack comes. And in Luke 8 and 23, Luke, Luke tells us when the attack comes, because Luke said that he now falls asleep while they are sailing. But, but then Mark tells us where, Mark tells us where he's asleep. Mark says he's in the stern of the boat. And so we now see why the attack comes. We now see when the attack comes. And we now see where he was when the attack comes. But, but the question that I have this morning, and I don't, I, I don't really want to dive too deep in this, but this is just me this morning. Here's a question that I have for Jesus. Not why, not when, not where, but my question is, Jesus, how can you sleep? How can you dare sleep in the midst of the attack that's going on in my life? I'm sorry I got the wrong crowd this morning. I got the holy folks with me. Y'all already know all of that right there. That, that, that's my question. How can you dare sleep in the midst of this attack that's on me that's almost about to take my life out? The winds are beating on the boat. Water is filling the boat. But Jesus is asleep. How can you sleep, Jesus? Jesus says this morning, Terry Carter, Jesus says that, listen, the reason that I can sleep in, in, in the midst of what's going on, the reason I, I can sleep it, it is because you see me sleeping on a pillow, but I'm really sleeping on a promise. You, you, you see me sleeping on a pillow, but I, I'm sleeping on a, a promise. Go, go back to verse 35. Jesus says, let us cross over. He says, let us 
cross over. And when Jesus says, let us, that, that, that means that you are not by yourself, that, that I'm with you when you cross over. That even when you're going through your divorce, baby, I'm with you. That even when you're going through your bankruptcy, I'm still with you. Even when you're trying to come out of the valley of the shadow of death, Jesus says, I'm with you. And when I'm with you, you are more than an overcomer. And you ought to tap with your neighbor somewhere and tell your neighbor that I'm glad that he gives me example during my attack because I understand that when I'm going through my attack he can rest and if he can rest during the attack that means in my attack I can rest also because I have a promise and I can lay my head on a pillow because I got a promise so when I lay down at night I don't have to worry I don't have to I wonder, I got a promise from the Lord so I can rest when I lay down at night. Because I got a promise that I'm coming out of this thing. We, we going to make it to the other side. So this morning, we see from the text this morning, we see he gives an explanation, an explanation for the attack. And he gives us an example during the attack. But then thirdly, and I'm done this morning, he, he now gives us an exit strategy in the attack. He now gives an exit strategy in the attack. You ought to tell somebody there's a way out. He gives me a way out. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 10 and 9, it says there's no temptation has overtaken you that is not common to man. For God is faithful that he will not let you to be tempted beyond your ability but that with the temptation, he would also provide a way of escape that you may be able to endure in this. In verse 39, he gives us an exit strategy. Exit strategy this morning, this morning, Mike, is simply this. They woke Jesus up. They, they woke Jesus up. And, and when they woke him up, what they were doing was they were now getting him involved in the uh, attack. Well, there are three things that Jesus does when they wake him up. The first thing that Jesus does when they wake him up is that he arose in the presence of the storm. But then he arrested the power of the storm because the Bible says he now speaks to the storm. And then thirdly, he arranged the peace to come out of the storm because Jesus now looks at the storm and he says, peace be still. In other words, it's time, storm, for you to shut up. In other words, what Jesus says, it's time for you, Satan, to take your hand off of God's children. I want to tell somebody this morning that John 14 and 27, Jesus says, peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world give do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. Well, this morning I want to tell somebody that the Lord will aid you. He will aid you. Well, how will he aid you this morning, Pastor? He'll aid you when you just ask him. That's why you hear the hymnologist wrote the song one day, and he says, ask the Savior to help you, comfort, strengthen, and keep you. He's willing to aid you. Jesus will carry you through. I'm glad this morning, Martha, that he gave me an exit strategy from the attack of the enemy. And my exit strategy is all I got to do is wake him up. And anybody this morning want to tell somebody, I'm glad that I woke him up this morning. Early this morning when I woke up, he had already gotten up. And even though I went to sleep last night with some trouble on my mind, I woke up this morning and Jesus was already woke. And now I just told him all about my troubles. And he came by and he aided me in the midst of my trouble. I want to tell somebody as I go to my seat this morning that he wants to aid you. He wants to comfort you. He wants to keep you. All you got to do is just wake him up. Well, good morning, Mount Lebanon Baptist Church. May the Lord bless you real good. But is there anybody in the house this morning 
just want to testify that he'll aid you in the midst of the attack of the enemy. I had some hellhounds on my track, but the devil was on my track, and God made the devil behave. Is there anybody this morning want to testify and tell somebody I was down in sin? deep as I thought I could be but the Lord came to my rescue. Is there anybody this morning just want to testify that I know I need some help. I know that God will help because I saw him help you and if God help you and God help you I know the Lord can help me also because he's no respect of person. I want to tell somebody this morning he'll aid you if you're down and out, he'll aid you. When you feel like you're by yourself, he'll aid you. When you feel like you run out of money before you run out of month, he'll aid you in the midst of your sickness. When you feel like the doctor has given up on you, he'll aid you because he is Jehovah Rapha. He's a God that heals you. He will provide for you because he's Jehovah Jireh. He makes a way out of no way. He'll give you peace in the midst of your storm because he's Jehovah Shalom. He's the God of peace. Well, good morning, Mount Lebanon. I pray you have a great day. But I stopped by to tell somebody I've got an egg who sticks by me and that when the going gets rough and the going gets tough, I'll wake him up and tell him, Jesus, coming to my rescue i don't know about you but i tried him one day i woke him up he said peace be still i tried him one day when i was broke busted and disgusted he made a way out of no way i tried him when i had health issues and no doctor could fix my problem but i gave it to the master he worked it out is there anybody here want to tell somebody I know the man from Galilee I got him in my boat he makes ways out of no ways he walks with me he talks with me he tells me that I am his own God bless you Mount Lebanon I love you today but I gotta tell you trust and never doubt he will work it out. Won't he do it? Won't he do it? Won't he do it? Say yeah. Yeah. Say yeah. Yeah. Say yeah. He'll aid you. He'll aid you. He'll give you an explanation for the attack. He'll give an example during the attack. But he'll give you an exit strategy from the attack. He knows how to make the devil behave. He'll make him behave today. So when I, when I'm going through, guess what? I got somebody that's right by my side that's going through with me. And he already gives me the promise that we're going to make it to the other side. Come on, stand up. Come on, come on. Stand, stand, stand. He's a, He's willing to aid you today. He wants to carry you through. But there may be somebody here today that's not saved, and you just don't feel like you have an aid on your side. I invite you this morning. I invite you this morning to come to give your life to Jesus. Let him aid you today. Let him aid you today. Let him come to be that helpmate that you need to walk with you. But there may be somebody here today that you already saved, but you need a church home. You want to come to make Mount Lebanon the place where you want to reside as a member. Why don't you come today? We invite you to come to be a part of the congregation here at Mount Lebanon. We will walk together with you through this pilgrim journey. Is there one who would come this morning? Man, woman, boy, girl, you want to come. You want him to be your aid. Aid. Every head bow while we pray. I want him to be your aid. 
I wanted to be your caregiver. That's <laughs> right there with you when you need him. Father, thank you now for your people that's come today to hear your word. Touch that life right now, God, that's trying to make a decision, comes in, wants to make a decision, but the enemy keeps knocking at the door saying, no, 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 no. But Jesus says, yes, come, that I can partner with you. I'll be your aid throughout eternity. That's what I'm here for. That's why the Father sent me to be your aid. And that's what I want to be for you today. So touch right now. Speak right now. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You may be seated. May be seated. The Bible says they got to the other side. And all those in the boat said, who is this? What manner of man can this be that even the wind and the waves obey his will? He'll aid you. Amen, amen. It's offering time. Come on, brother, what is, come on, come on, come on. Come on, as we give today. Anybody in church like giving? Uh, Anybody in church like giving? That, that sounded like about three of y'all that like giving. Well, you can't give if you don't have. But if he's blessed you to have, you ought to love giving. Now, if, if you want the Lord to love you, learn how to give. You, you know how I know that? Because you're going to see it on the screen. The Bible says God loves a what? So when I love to give cheerfully, he loves me. He loves a cheerful giver. And the more you give, the more he give back to you. Can we all stand as we read our offertory litany today? It's offering time. <laughs> it's time to bring our tithes and offerings. To whom does the tithe belong? Who should tithe? Why should we tithe? How much should we tithe? What is God's promise to us when we tithe? There it is. What kind of giver does the Lord love? Show forgiver. Amen. Amen. Come on, ushers. Our young ushers are on the floor this morning. Amen for them. <laughs> 